Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game uh, from the Superbet Chess Classic 2021. Uh, it's Fabiana Corona versus Constantin Lupulescu, uh, another gentleman from Romania. We already uh, checked out two games uh, by uh, by uh, Daek. Uh, I don't know, uh, you, you guys said I almost got it right, so it's either Daek or Daek, but I, I think it's Daek. So if it's Daek, uh, you know, just uh, you know, say, 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 say something in the comments so I know for, for the next video that I'm making. Uh, but yeah, here we have Fabiano Corwana versus Constantin Lupulescu. Uh, another very exciting game and, uh, well, it, it just uh, ended so abruptly that it's uh, it's so so cool to see. So, Fabi with the white pieces opens with e4. We have e6, Lupulescu goes for the French defense. We have d4, d5, uh, and now knight to c3. We have knight to f6, going for the classical variation. Uh, and now, well, you could uh, advance the pawn, for example, with something like e5, then the knight goes back. Here we have bishop to g5, just uh, pinning that knight here. We have d captures on e4, knight captures, and knight b to d7. So adding another defender to the knight here, we have knight to f3, and now h6. Asking, do you want to go back or do you want to capture on f6? Uh, the absolute main line is just a capture on f6, which is what Fabi does. Knight captures and now bishop to d3. Continuing development, we have knight captures on e4, bishop captures and now c5. And the black pretty much solved all of his uh, opening problems. He uh, traded some pieces, now he, he got his c5 moving, attacks the center, and now he, uh, he still needs to develop his pieces, but so far everything is working out nicely for him. Uh, and here, uh, although the pawn is attacked twice, Fabi just moves the queen out of the way. He says queen to e2, and this is the, the top move in the position, because uh, grabbing this, while you could do it, you don't really get to keep the pawn, because after pawn captures, you can castle queenside, and now you can't defend the the pawn. Uh, e5 is not an option, the knight covers that, and if you try bishop to c5, well, you instantly will resign this, because queen delivers check, and the, the bishop will just fall. So after queen to e2, we have queen to a5 check, this is all very standard stuff. Uh, we have c3 defending, and only now c captures on d4. Now the knight has to capture, the c-pawn is pinned, and now bishop to e7. Now Lupulescu is also preparing to castle, uh, Fabi castles queen side, uh, and he says, all right, if you want, you can grab this a2 pawn, and well, it seems like a pawn you, you dream of capturing, because Fabi just castled queen side, uh, you don't really uh, gain all that much, because here, queen to b5 check, and what do you do now? Uh, there actually is one game where, where this happened, uh, bishop to d7 was played and then you can just capture here, and uh, black has no good way of uh, of making use of all of these pieces in front of the white king, uh, and if you play something like king to f8 and say I'm gonna take advantage of it later on, then you can just play rook h to e1, and there's no good move for black, you, you don't really care about one check, you can just move the king. Uh, and then wh uh, where does the queen go? You, <laughs> it's a pretty pretty crazy position. You can't develop the bishop. You can't really get this rook into the game. You can't get this rook into the game. So it would be very hard for black to play this. So instead we have castles by Lupulescu and now king to b1. This is not a prophylactic king to b1. This is just king b1 defending the pawn uh, uh, as it's already under attack. So here we have rook to d8. Uh, and now comes bishop to c2. And this is what I find uh, really interesting about the, this line of uh, playing against uh, uh, the, the French with white is that you already have uh, an idea of what you want to do. Uh, it's only move 15 and uh, black has no knights. Black traded off uh, both knights and now he has the bishop pair, but it's not a bishop pair that's actually fully operational, or at least not yet. So here, bishop to d7, black wants to of course uh, activate his bishops uh, and now uh, get the other rook into the game. Now queen e4, now we threaten queen h7, king f8 and uh, queen to h8 checkmate. So g6 must be played and now h4, Fabi wants to play h5 and uh, bust open the position here. And now what you should do here, and this is probably the moment that um, uh, everyone was wondering what's happening here, uh, is, uh, uh, is this h5 move. And h5 was not played, but this seems to be the strongest, but it's, it looks so ugly that you don't want to play it. Point is, uh, white will uh, play g4, uh, attack this pawn, but black doesn't really care. Black will play bishop to c6, and he's just going to trade everything off. So now you have to trade, otherwise you're going to lose a lot of material here. So knight captures, b captures, and uh, you're perfectly fine here. 
uh, you, you can trade off a pair of rooks, you can bring the other rook into the game. You don't care about the disc because the queen also uh, defends that pawn, so it's not really a problem. Uh, you easily get another very strong defender over, over to the king's side. So you, you can play this. However, bishop to a4 was played by Lupulescu, and while this is still playable, it does offer Fabi uh, uh, a bit more. Here, Fabi plays a bishop, captures on a4, queen captures, and now h5, just, you know, again, threatening to bust open the position. g5, and now you have this position where Fabi needs, uh, needs some sort of a move to get things going. Uh, and here, well, there are some very nice ideas, like maybe you could do a rook cliff to get the rook into the game. You could maybe uh, strike uh, on the king's side immediately with it. With, with a move like f4 fabi just uh plays uh end uh, while well, i might add in cold blood uh queen captures on b7 so he grabs this pawn and he opens up the b file for the black rooks to attack and it it looks like a move that you don't play uh but fabi is uh you know uh, world number two he's uh, really good at calculating lines and uh, if he says this is okay uh, should be okay. The problem is this bishop is hanging and you can't even sacrifice it for some sort of an attack because even if you go for some like rook here, queen captures, there is nothing you can do here. If the queen was on a5, maybe if you had some queen captures on c3 action or something. Uh, but here you have to react to this bishop uh, being attacked. So here you should move it to f6, just bishop f6, get the bishop over here, or even to f8, maybe bishop to g7 later on. But here, bishop to c5 was played, and now uh, Fabi's, uh, well, uh, th this makes it all that much easier for Fabi to just uh, keep uh, keep his uh, extra pawn. So what would you play here? You know, pause the video and try to find the, the, the best way to exploit uh, what was just given to you. Uh, well, I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding such, a elegant, uh, uh, such an elegant move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to c6 with a double attack here. And now black uh, either trades or he has to play some... Uh, some, uh, well, serious series of moves like like queen to c4 to defend it, but then you get knight to b3 uh, with a double attack on the bishop here. Then, okay, the rook can come into the attack. You can't play this rook because then we can capture this rook. So you have to play this rook. This rook remains undeveloped. And now, for example, queen to f3, and the game continues. But white's setup with the pawn on c3 is so strong that you don't have to worry about uh, any any attacks here. And uh, it's it's just much easier to play to play this with white. You, you can simply bring a rook into the game, put some pressure here. Uh, it's just a very very nice position for white. However, in the game, queen captures on c6 was played. Lupulescu said, "All right, uh, you grab the pawn. I'm gonna trade down. I can hold this being a pawn down." But that is, uh, well, that's easier said than done. Knight captures on c6. We have rook captures on d1 with check. Rook captures and now bishop captures on f2. So he grabs the pawn back. But now comes rook to d7. Uh, so material is now completely equal. But Fabi has a monster rook here on uh, on, on the 7th rank. Also, uh, if, if uh, some of you are new to chess, uh, a rook on the 7th is often called a pig or a hog even. Uh, okay, it's, it's more of a hog. Uh, maybe if it's, you know, doing business on the h-file. On the 7th, it's it's mostly a pig as it just gobbles up pawns. Uh, so here you have to play something, but there, it, it's hard to figure out what to do here. Uh, you can't really move the rook. This is taken by the knight. This is taken by the rook and the knight. If you try something like this to attack the knight, 97 check just wins the rook. Uh, so it's hard to find the move here for black. Uh, so what uh, black does here is he... Uh, plays f6 and this is definitely one of those positions where you don't want to play f6 uh, but uh, there, there's no better move like you could play something like a6 a5 it's very hard to, to find the move here for black so f6 was played but now uh, the king really has no business uh, being in this game and it, it's all white from, from this point on here Fabi strikes uh, with knight to d8 now just threatening to win this pawn and uh, how do you defend it? The problem is if you just push it, let's say here, then knight to f7 comes. And again, what do you play? You can defend the h6 pawn after you make a move. Doesn't really matter. Just knight captures uh, on h7. Even if you defend it, we can now capture some other pawn. Doesn't really matter which one because you are now, uh, you, you walked into a discovery. So we're going to start eliminating pawns. And uh, black's position is, is just so bad that it, this is unplayable. So instead, after this knight to d8 move, bishop to b6 was played. Now he gives up the pawn uh, for the idea that if uh, knight captures, then we can play rook to e8. We can bring at least activate the rook. Now the knight moves, maybe we can do some check, uh, followed by rook e2, maybe we grab a pawn, and so on. 
However, Fabi just goes knight to f7, and now he says, I I'm still going to apply the same idea. You can't defend the h6 pawn. So here we have rook to f8, and now Fabi grabs it. Knight captures on h6 with check king to h8 and now just king to c2 uh, and it was in this position on move 28 that uh, Konstantin Lupulescu resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, I just realized uh, I just realized his name is not centered so let me just fix that. For some reason it moved a little bit to the right that's weird so let me just uh, really quickly fix that. There we go. Why did why didn't you guys say something? All right, so that's nicely centralized. Uh, so here you resign uh, because there's nothing you can do. The king is never entering the game. Uh, you can't activate the rook. The white rook occupies the only open file on the board. Uh, okay, you could you could play this, no problem. But then knight to f7 check, and again you lose the rook. So again the knight is your 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 <laughs> worst enemy. Uh, what you could do is maybe you could try pushing some pawns, but it it doesn't really work. I, if you try something like uh, uh, like e5, then we play g4, and then these pawns are locked in here. You can never touch the f5 square. And now look at this. You can just bring your king over here, <laughs> over to g6, and deliver uh, rook to h7 checkmate. There are even ideas uh, like these. And if you try something like f5, well, this does kind of make sense. Then you lose the g5 pawn. Then, for example, knight f7 check. King G8 Knight captures here. Now you're down two pawns. Now it's an easily winning game for White. So uh, very, very interesting. And uh, it seems like completely out of nowhere, Fabi got a, a, a beautiful position. And uh, I mean, it's just so uh, when things really work out, like, okay, this is all fine, 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 fine. Then we had this uh, here, the castles by black was a new move. I don't know if I mentioned that, but then all of a sudden you have this queen to E4. And maybe this is playable for black but it's so easy to play it for white that uh, after g6 i mean you just saw it, it basically plays by itself and you need the uh, you know surgical precision to, to just hold this with black so that's uh that's uh w what you get uh, usually when you play uh, the french defense you know it's it, it is very hard to play but uh you know very very strong players fell victim to it so you know play it and, and see what happens so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, we're gonna cover the, we're gonna check out the standings maybe after round three because nothing is really happening yet. Only two decisive games were played. The one that we've already seen uh, by uh, by Deak uh, and uh, by uh, here uh, Fabi uh, versus Lupulescu. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to thank Dave Sales, uh, Attila Kerestesi, uh, Sidney Hamill, uh, Harvey Frost, uh, and Benjamin uh, Hochberg for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.